Robotic assisted surgery allows for incredible precision, resulting in faster recoveries, shorter hospital stays, and enhanced results for patients. In this episode, we sit down with one of Community Memorial Healthcare pioneers in robotic surgery, urologist Dr. Mark Beegler, to discuss a brief history of robotics at Community Memorial Healthcare and the benefits of the Da Vinci Robotic Surgery Platform. This is Wise and Well, presented by Community Memorial Healthcare. I'm Caitlin White. Doctor, start us off here. Tell us about your background and education. I'm a urologist. I was uh, trained at a university program at Loma Linda University, specialized in minimally invasive surgery. And after I completed my training, I stayed on as a associate professor at Loma Linda in the Department of Urology for four years. I moved to Ventura in 2021, and I've been in practice, uh, both in private practice and practice with a hospital since that time. And how long have you been a Da Vinci-trained surgeon? I founded the program here along with Dr. Avaziak, Dr. Rare, myself, in 2004, and we started doing our first cases of, of any volume in 2005. Great. Well, tell us, how did the introduction of robotic surgery change the trajectory of your career as a surgeon? That's an interesting question. I don't know that it necessarily changed the trajectory of my career, but it certainly changed how we practice urology for the last 15 or so years in terms of how we treated prostate cancer and renal cell carcinoma and urologic cancers in general. So, I would say that it sort of re- it uh, basically revolutionized how surgery was done for kidney cancer and uh, in this practice uh, for us with treatment of prostate cancer. And when did Community Memorial Healthcare first introduce robotic surgery? 2004 is when, when we got the first robot. I think we did the first case at the end of 2004, but really in earnest, the program started in full in 2005. So tell us a bit about that journey of implementing the first surgical robot. What was that like? Well, it was very difficult uh, in the beginning because uh, it uh, is so revolutionary in terms of how we uh, did surgery. And at that time, we got the first generation robot. All of us, uh, Dr. Vaziak, myself, Dr. Rare, we all went to learn and uh, we took special courses and training. And then uh, we started doing cases, and we did the first cases we did with proctors who came from outside our institution to help us uh, establish and set up our program and train us on on the uh, techniques. That took about a year to really get to the end of that. And then after that, we just started doing cases with our partners, and then eventually it's developed to the point where now uh, most of the cases are done with either a first assistant who is a surgical resident, or oftentimes we use uh, surgical uh, nurses that help us in the operating room perform those procedures. And, and for the most part, they're done with with primary surgeon and a, a second assist who is a usually a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. Mm. And how has robotic surgery progressed at Community Memorial Healthcare since then? Well, the program has grown extensively from the very beginning. In the beginning, there were only a few of us, obviously, doing cases, primarily the uh, urologists and uh, general surgeons. Now it's expanded into a large number of cases being done by the uh, gynecologic surgeons, both for benign disease and also for uh, malignant disease. So uh, the gyne oncologists are are doing a large number of robotic cases. General surgery is doing a large number of of cases. Obviously, urology is is doing a large number of cases. Now the uh, thoracic surgeons are doing a lot of uh, lung surgery and other cases. So it's grown into all those areas. And since the inception of the program in 2005, we now have two robots and a teaching monitor where the uh, assistants can learn how to operate the robot uh, along with the uh, attending surgeons. So the the program has grown tremendously. The volume of cases has gone up tremendously. 
we've exceeded a total of 5,000 cases in our program since uh, inception. So every year, there's been an increase in, in the number of surgeons that are doing uh, robotic surgery, along with increases in subspecialty areas that are doing robotic cases, and also basically just increases in all areas in terms of number of cases that are done. So the program has, has uh, grown uh, consistently year after year since the beginning. And we're at the point now where we probably need to have another a dedicated robot to bring us up to three robots and probably another teaching monitor as well. Well, let's dive into those different areas. What types of procedures are available using the DaVinci Surgical Platform? Well, we'll start with urology. In urology, we do um, robotic radical prostatectomies for prostate cancer. Dr. Poon does simple robotic prostatectomies. We also do partial nephrectomies, which means that we can remove part of the tumor or we can remove the tumor and leave the kidney uh, in place. That's called a partial nephrectomy. And also we can do radical nephrectomies, which means to remove the entire kidney and the surrounding tissue in certain cases. In addition, there's complex uh, reconstructive procedures that can be done urologically. So that's urology. General surgery, they use it for hernia repairs. They use it for bowel resections. They use it for basically all the different general surgical procedures, and that, that has grown you know, exponentially over the last, I'd say, five years. In uh, gynecology, they use it for removal of benign pelvic lesions like uh, fibroid tumors, and in gynecologic oncology, they, they use it to remove pelvic gynecologic neoplasms. So they use it extensively. In thoracic surgery, they use it for lung resections and for biopsies. There's even discussion about, uh, in other areas, they, they use robotic surgery for cardiac surgery as well. So in all those areas, it's, you know, it's grown. And so it's, it's uh, kind of a moving target. So not sure what's going to be next, but that's kind of where things are. That's the state of the, uh, state of the art at our hospital currently. Wonderful. So how does robotic-assisted surgery provide a better experience for the patient than traditional laparoscopic surgery? You know, if you look at laparoscopic surgery, laparoscopic surgery to do some of these procedures, like, for example, a laparoscopic uh, prostatectomy. It's technically, if you're doing a pure laparoscopic procedure, it's very difficult, and only a few people really have the skills to do it laparoscopically to do that complex of an operation. So it provided the ability to do uh, suturing and do all the type of surgery that we would do normally in an open situation, but to do it laparoscopically. In terms of urologic applications, I mean, a lot of the, the cases that we do are extremely difficult anyways, but they would be almost impossible or very difficult to do laparoscopically. But the real difference is it's really not much difference in terms of patient recovery and all those issues. It's really the ability to provide more tools for the surgeon. So in terms of the patient, the net net is is that most patients with some of these complex procedures like a, a radical robotic prostatectomy, for example, they often go home the same day as the procedure is done, which is revolutionary compared to the way surgery was done previously. So minimally invasive, not a lot of big incisions. Patients are able to go home sooner. They're able to get back to work sooner. And then they um, ultimately uh, have the same outcome or better outcome doing it robotically. Well, that does sound like a much better experience. Doctor, how do I know if I'm a candidate for a robotic-assisted procedure? Well, you don't. I mean, that really depends on what your problem is and who you see, right? So, um, you know, uh, ideal candidates are, are patients that haven't had a lot of previous surgery, for example, and then they have disease which is treated robotically. So it just depends on the on the clinical situation. But you you wouldn't necessarily know right off the bat, but it just depends on the clinical situation. Great. Well, Dr. Beagler, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us today. You can always find more podcasts and resources at mycmh.org.
And if you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and check out the full podcast library for topics of interest to you. This is Wise and Well, presented by Community Memorial Health System. I'm Caitlin White. Be well.